Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the datum plane within the parts line workbench. You'll also notice that my FreeCAD has changed slightly, and that's because I'm using Real Thunder's mod pack, which is a few variations compared to normal. If you'd like to know more about Real Thunder's mod, I'll leave a link in the description down below. So to start things off, we're in the parts line workbench, and the datum icon is up here on our tool ribbon. Now mine might be in a slightly different location compared to yours, as I've made the icons bigger, it's pushed everything around a bit. So this is what the icon looks like. So I'm going to create myself a body, as we need an active body to create a datum. I'm going to make the origin visible. In this mod, I can tick and untick the eye, but in older versions, I can simply click on the origin and press the spacebar. Without selecting any of the planes, I'm going to click on our datum tool. You'll see a yellow square appear, along with some parameters to the left of our screen. We have our references, our attachment mode, and our offsets. Now you'll see here it says not attached and below that it says selecting. At this current point our modes don't work and our offsets are currently greyed out. So this wants us to select our first reference for where we would like our datum plane to be. So I'm going to select our XY origin. You'll notice immediately how it tells us attached with mode plane face and our mode box has shortened in selectable options and we can now change some of these offsets. You'll also notice that if I change our mode here, that one of these is in bold. This is the selection that FreeCAD recommends based on the references you've selected. There's a wiki page that I will link in the description below, which goes into some detail about part attachment and the attachment mode. Then on the offsets, we can move in all three axes, as well as being able to rotate our plane and again manipulate it to how we want. Flip sides, reverses our offset around the X, Y plane. So if I was to put five in the Z plane, you'll see it move up. And if I click on the flip sides, you'll see how it has now been reversed on the X, Y plane. You'll also notice in these boxes, there is a formula icon, which I'll come to a little bit later in the video. Moving on to our next example, you'll see that I've got myself a cube here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna select the top face and I'm gonna click on the datum plane. Now you'll see that the face that I selected has already been put into reference one. And you can see that it's saying selecting. Now, if I was to select another face, like so, you'll see that the reference doesn't move to the next box and it will continue to say selecting. So I can select lines, I can select vertices, and I can select faces. It's only when I click on reference two that it will actually change and that will say selecting. So again, if I want this in the middle of this cube, I can select the opposite face, like so. I can also start the datum tool without clicking any of these faces, lines or vertices on the cube. I can just click on the datum plane, it will then ask me to select a reference. So if I select this top face, it will then move onto the second, so the selecting, and I can then click on the bottom face, like so, and it will move again onto selecting. That's a slight difference to when you're just selecting a simple face. But obviously if you're only selecting one face and then pressing OK, then that's absolutely fine. I can also select all the references before I click on the datum plane. So again, the same example, if I want a datum plane between these two faces, I've now selected those faces. If I click on the datum plane, you see how it's used those references and it's created a datum plane in the middle of our cube. For this next part, I'm going to move over very briefly to the main FreeCAD program. So some of you may know what I'm talking about when I say topological naming problem. And what that is, for those of you who don't know, quoted directly from the FreeCAD wiki, it refers to the issue of a shape changing its internal name after a modeling operation, such as a pad, cut, union, chamfer, or fillet, is performed. As an example of this, you'll see here I've got myself three padded sketches, one on top of the other, not using any datums, just simply clicking onto a face and creating a new sketch. What I'm going to do is, change our second pad sketch and see how that affects the rest of our geometry. So I'll click on our second sketch and I'm just going to move this left hand line off the edge of our first shape, like so. I'm then going to click close. You'll notice immediately how a sketch has randomly appeared. Also our third pad operation in our model tree has an arrow link to it. This is the topological naming problem. At first I thought I could get around this by creating a datum on each face and then attach a sketch to that datum. Unfortunately, that just yielded the same results. The way we can get around this is by creating a datum plane at the origin. 
but then linking the datum to a piece of geometry using the formulas tab I referenced earlier. So what I've got here is got myself a sketch and I've padded it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my origin visible as I want to attach the datum to the XY plane. So I'm going to click on the XY plane, click on our datum point, and you'll see we can now edit these features at the bottom. I'm going to click on the function key down here, which is going to bring up a formula box, and I'm going to type in here pad.length. Now you'll notice it has to be in capital letters, so if I just click on the length there, it will change the pad to a capital as well. So what that has done is that has given me the length of our original pad, which is 20 mil. So I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to say OK to that. Now whenever I change uh, the length of this pad or the height of this pad, the datum will move with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this, this plane, and I'm going to create another sketch. Again, I'm just going to create a very simple box, close out of that, and I'm going to pad that by 15 mil, like so. And I'm going to create another datum on the XY plane, like so. And I'm going to click on the formula box again. This time, I'm going to say pad.length plus pad001.length, like so. And what that is doing, that is creating a, an overall length of both of our pads. So I'm going to say OK to that. And as you can see, it is now attached to the top of our second pad. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to hide our origin point because I no longer need that. I'll then create a third sketch on top of that datum point. And again, it's just going to be a rough box, like so. And I'm going to pad that by 10 mil. Now, if I go back to our second sketch, which is this one here, and I now manipulate that like I did in the previous example, like so, close out of that, and you'll see how everything has stayed exactly the same. And that is how we solve the naming problem. I can edit all of these geometries. If I just hide those datum points, it's a little bit easier to see. So let's say I want the second pad, and I want to add in uh, some simple lines, so like this, and I'm just going to cut out that line there, and close that. You'll see how, again, everything stays the same. If I change our bottom sketch, like so, you see again how nothing has changed. We have created ourselves a solid piece of geometry, uh, which is easy to manipulate and change previous pieces of geometry. But you're probably thinking, that's a little long-winded and kind of annoying. Why can't I just draw on a face like any other CAD software? Well, with Real Thunder's mod, you can. It solves the naming problem and makes creating geometry quicker and with less hassle. So moving back into Real Thunder's mod, the naming problem is no longer an issue. You can see here that I'm creating sketches on faces, extruding them, and then manipulating past features to see if it causes any issues, all without using a datum plane. Our geometry is solid, which makes creating really easy, speeding up our process at the same time. I've read a few posts that are saying this mod could be added into FreeCAD, so hopefully that is the case. Obviously some parameters still exist, such as making sure any geometry you create is attached to the main body, otherwise this will still throw up an error. So now that I've briefly covered the naming problem and how we can get around that, what are the other things we can use the datum plane for? Well, one option would be, instead of creating a sketch and offsetting it on our model, we can do this with a datum plane. I'll create a datum on our YZ plane, and use the formula icon to offset it from our part, which will then make it stable for any future changes. So I'm going to go down here, click on our formula, and I'm going to say pad.length minus 10 millimeters, which is my unit of measure. When using the formula feature within FreeCAD, make sure to put the unit of measure at the end. Within this mod, it doesn't matter, but other versions, you'll get an error message that looks a lot like this. I think it's just a good habit to get into and can just limit problems within the future. So I'm going to say OK to that, and as you can see, it is now 10 millimeter off the end of our cylinder. If I say OK, and I update our cylinder length, so let's say I want it to be 100 mil, and say OK, you'll see that our datum is still off the end of our cylinder, which I'm going to assume is about 10 millimeters. In my opinion, I find this method a lot cleaner, and it makes me feel better that hopefully I'm creating a more stable part that can withstand multiple back and forth changes. So what if I want to create a datum between a few different points? Well, in this case, I'll click on my datum point, 
And let's say I want to create it between a couple of vertices. So I'm going to click on those two there, and then I'm going to add a third one here. And you'll see that it has created a datum point or datum plane between those three points. So I'm going to say OK to that. And then I'm going to click on that datum plane, click on the sketch icon, and I'm just going to create myself a piece of simple geometry and extrude that up and say OK. So as you can see, that is created from our datum plane. But if I was to change that datum, so let's say in the Z, I want to go down, say OK, you'll see how it updates like so. You can see that obviously the datum is in a place that would unlikely be able to be created unless it was between these three vertices. So what if I then update this cube? So let's say I change the actual width of this cube. So I'm going to put that to 20 mil and say OK. And you'll see how the datum conforms still to the three vertices that I picked. And you can see how the cylinder still conforms to that. So what about if I change the length? So I'm going to change that to 50 mil. Again, you'll see that the datum plane is still connected to the three vertices and the cylinder is still within the cube. So for another example, I want to cut this piece of geometry in half. So I've got this datum plane, which is whereabouts I want it, doesn't really matter for this, and I want to cut it in half. So I'm going to select my box, select my datum plane, and I'm going to click on this icon within Real Funders mod, and that will slice it in half. And you'll see in the parameters box that we've got both of our pieces left. That'll be all for today's tutorial, and I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to all of you who have subscribed, liked, commented, and given feedback on how I can improve these videos and make it easier to learn. As I've said in the past, I've got some exciting projects that I really want to share, both FreeCAD related, workshop related, and a mixture of the two. But as with all things, nothing ever goes the way you plan, but I guess that's part of life's rich tapestry. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. And as always, have an epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.